Hey, good morning. Little uh little uh voice is is uh is a little funky this morning. Good morning. Happy Saturday. I need some coffee. I got uh got like a smoker's voice this morning. I didn't sleep well last. I didn't sleep much last night. So we didn't have a hobby evolution yesterday. I went to a baseball game, went to a Cubs game. Some things happened, as I was teasing, as we got into it, Thursday I revealed kind of what was going to happen. Now, I didn't really know what all was going to happen. It exceeded my wildest dreams and expectations on the day at Wrigley Field, thanks to Tops, thanks to the Chicago Cubs. It was, uh, it was quite the day to remember. Quite the day. So, so that's what I did yesterday. Went to a baseball game. I even, I did some, uh, you know, I did some, I threw out the first pitch, Wrigley. I did some arm exercise, getting that, you know, getting that worked out. Stretch out, keep it warm. It was cold. It was a cold day at Wrigley. Uh, but the sun did peak out, which did help, especially when we pregame, when we were on the field pregame. It's like, whew, that sun feels really nice. Then when the sun kind of went through the clouds and we're sitting there in the sixth inning, like, oh, hurry up, pitch clock. Do your thing. Cubs are winning. Let's get this game over with. Uh, it was a fun game. Good game. Cubs win. We, fl uh, we flew the W. We sung the song. And, you know, I was, my cousin was, uh, my cousin came up and his comment was, you know, it was awesome because the Cubs won. We got to see Otani hit a home run and it didn't mean anything. And that, like, that's perfect. Yeah. We got to see Otani hit a home run. Otani got booed. There were a lot of Dodgers fans in Wrigley Field yesterday. Um, but, uh, my, uh, my wife's friend Angie came with us and she's from the, the Northern suburbs. And, uh, I didn't realize this, but the Dodgers actually have a couple local kids. Um, Bobby Miller, who was the starting pitcher yesterday for the Dodgers. And he got rough. He's from McHenry. I didn't know that he went to McHenry, I guess. And, uh, Gavin Lux is a Kenosha kid. And I probably knew that at some point in time, but it's like, oh. So I think that probably helped. Uh, I think that helped with a lot of uh, local Dodger fans. Um, and then I think the Otani effect. Uh, there was a lot of uh, Japanese media and a lot of Japanese fans in attendance. And I think first game in Chicago um, for the Dodgers, I think that probably helped as well. Uh, so now I've had time to like, because I didn't sleep, I've, I just saw Merle's come. Otani frequently hit home runs that didn't count with the Angels. Touche. Touche. Um, but uh, uh, I can't remember what I was saying. But it was a great, it was a, it was a fun game. And uh, it was a, a really fun day. Oh, I've had time to like, I didn't sleep last night. So I've had time to like digest the entire day and uh because i was interviewed like we so uh i'd like to do like i'd like to tell the story in chronological order but i it, i probably just it, it just won't flow so i'll just try to point out things that happened but uh after the so after the first pitch and the presentation of the one millionth card which by the way People are like, shut up and show us the card. So what is the one millionth card? So I threw out the first pitch. So after the first pitch, it's like, okay, so here's what you're going to do. You're going to throw out the first pitch. Don't bounce it. Clark the Cub, the mascot, he's going to catch it if you throw a strike. <laughs> if not, he's going to have to chase after it. And then uh, so I take my picture, and I'm getting ready to walk off, and Clark the Cub's like, hey. We've got something for you, but he can't talk. So he's like motioning in the bag. So he pulls out this. 
Look at this. It's a Zion case with the Tops logo and my name, one millionth Cubs card. Let's open it up. What's in here? And as soon as I open it up, I'm like, oh, I see the gold, the shine. It is a super fractor of me. And uh, this photo was actually taken by the Tops film crew that came to my house. Uh, a couple weeks ago, right before I left for spring training. And they were, they were telling me, and so you find out things like, because it was like a lot of this was a surprise. And so they're, you know, they're like, okay, pose for a picture. Okay. Here. So that's why they were, they wanted, they wanted to get, and I just love how the baseball's in the back. And now that I'm looking at the, the gold super fractor finish, you got the classic Cubs in the corner, the baseball's in the other corner. So it is one one and on the back, it's and even better, it's in the 1989 Tops design. It's even got its own number, 1M-BT. How cool is that? One of one, the Super Fractor. The back uh, has my name, Collector Chicago Cubs. Start of the collection, 1988, which is when I began uh, truly co collecting uh, baseball cards. Size of the collection, 1 million Cubs cards. Uh, and then the uh, paragraph says, Bo grew up during the hobby boom of the 1980s and opened his first packs of Topps cards in 1988. The One Million Cubs project, a pursuit, a pursuit to collect a million Cubs baseball cards, kicked off in December 2017 with support from friends, MLB players, and strangers alike. Bo has officially reached his goal. On behalf of Topps, we proudly present him with his one millionth card. And it's the Super Fractor one of one now if you're like man i'd like to get my hands on one of those don't worry tops made base cards look at this so they gave me some base cards and it's the same it's also it's numbered 1m dash bt so there are base base cards uh for the one million card so uh so they joked afterwards or they joked it's it's actually one million one hundred yeah, 1 million 100 because they're 100 base cards. So we were in a green room. So after the presentation and uh, after the presentation, uh, we go into the in, into the green room underneath uh, Wrigley and uh, do like a sit down, like post, like, OK, what what's going through? And it's my thought is like I just it's so hard to describe because my emotions are, I was like emotionally frozen. Like the whole day I had so many emotions, which was actually probably good because I didn't let my emotions get to me. Like I wasn't too excited. I wasn't too nervous. I wasn't too anxious. Uh, so all of those, all of those emotions just fought each other and I just lived in the moment. And that's what one of my friend, Justin, uh, texted me and he's like, be, be in the moment. And so I, I kept that thought with me throughout the morning and tried to really live that advice and what I liken it to. And, and, uh, my buddy Scott came, we picked him up on the way down and, uh, we were sitting watching the game and like my phone's just absolutely blowing up with notifications and, He's like, this isn't, you know, I've got friends in town. I've got family in town. We're like all over the stadium. And I'm like, it's kind of like, and he's like, it sounds like it's like your wedding day. And I'm like, that's exactly what it felt like. Um, And what I mean by that, what I mean by that is on your wedding, what do people tell you on your wedding day? Like it goes fast and you're probably going to like, when it's once the dust settles and the the next day you're once you well the next day is still kind of hectic also but like two days later if you get married on a saturday on monday you're starting to reflect back on your wedding day your wedding night and you're like i didn't even see uncle arnie did i did i even talk to aunt ethel and you realize that holy it just went by in a flash and that's kind of what it was on uh, yesterday. Um, so I tried my best to live in the moment. And I tried to really soak up the entire experience 
from start to finish. Um, it was uh, in in as we're doing the the post post uh, stuff interview. Uh, like the only thing I could come up like it's awesome, it's surreal. Like I, I'm just like tongue tied. Like I just don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. So I just I kept trying to think of something different. Like come on, Bo, snap out of it. Say something different. So fortunately, they have great editors uh, and producers at Fanatics Tops. So they were able to make me at least sound somewhat not a moron. So thanks to, to Tops, it was great working with them the entire process. This has been about a, <clears throat> they first reached out to me, man. Uh, Morgan is who I worked with throughout the process. Uh, she was awesome. Um, probably six weeks ago when, when she first uh, reached out, we set up a Zoom call. Um, and then a couple guys came out to film. Uh, a few weeks ago when we were uh, right before I went to spring training. Um, and then uh, uh, they were with me uh, through the day yesterday. So it was, uh, it was, uh, it was, it was wild. Um, <clears throat> so we get that the only time, like I'm a very like, and I guess I don't think I am. Like I, I, I say I'm a very nervous person but I'm really not like, I'm just kind of like go with the flow. Like I'm just, I'm super chill most of the time. Like all of the, basically all of the time. Like I don't get caught up in, in, you know, uh, I don't get caught up in, in emotions and I'm pretty even keel every once in a while. I, you know, get fired up but for the most part. Um, but I think the most nervous I was, was, I think once, so I drove, my wife's like super crazy busy because it's spring market and real estate. Um, so she's up late and she's just like, and she looked, um, I shouldn't say this, but a lot of people said, you need to sleep. Like you look like you need to sleep. <laughs> so I drove like the, I drove down to Elgin where we picked up my buddy and, uh, and I thought like, I thought I'd be like pretty chill the whole drive because I'm driving to Elgin and I'll be like, yeah, I'm driving. So I've got, you know, I'm focused on the road. And then when, when Scott jumps in, like, Hey, we can, we can talk, but that's, that's that final stretch. That last hour of the drive is when it like really started to set in and it's like, Oh man. But once we got to Wrigley, once we got there and, once and then it was like boom it was like zero to 100 like okay let's go we're gonna do this and and cameras were in my face like the entire you know what time did we 10 45 uh so like 10 45 to 1 45 um approximately so 11 12 three hours um there's just cameras everywhere and posing and do this and it was it was wild it was crazy <clears throat> but it was a lot of fun it was a lot of fun. So uh, the first thing, so I'm going to, I'll share this story and then I'll get to some of the chats. So I'm not just rambling on and on. So uh, we, we meet at the, the offices right there at Wrigley and uh, meet film guys, Morgan, um, Stevie from the Cubs. Um, so we just all marquee network was there. I met Carly who we had exchanged uh, some emails like a year ago. Um, so I did something with marquee network after the first pitch, after the present, the cub, the, the card presentation. Um, and so they, they're like, Hey, we, so we've got something for you. And it's a, I don't have it in here. It's a Jersey. It's a Cubs Jersey. It's got my name Thompson on the back one M for 1 million. I'm like, Oh my God, this is cool. So I put that on, they, they get video of me putting that on next to the world series trophy. Um, so then we go down to, uh, which I think is the actual world series trophy. Like I think the one inside Wrigley and somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the one inside where you take photos with, I think that's like a replica. Um, but I think the authentic original is what's inside the offices. Um, cause there's like a security guard there and there's like, uh, what, what the hell do you call it? Security scan scanner thing that you have to walk through metal detector or whatever. I don't think, do they call them metal detectors? I don't know. Anyway, 
So uh, we put the jersey on, uh, take some photos, and then we uh, they like take us. They're like, we got to go down here. And so I have no idea. Like I'm just hey, let's we're all just hanging out. My friends are with me. My wife's with me. We're just hanging out. And all of a sudden they're like, look at the marquee. That's my name on the marquee. It says, congrats on 1 million Cubs, Bo. I'm like, oh my God. Like, this is the, like, I could, like, let's, you don't even have to give me the card now. Forget the first pitch. This is, I got my own jersey and I'm on the marquee. It doesn't get any better than this, but it did. So, uh, so that was like the first, you know, first 20 minutes of, of how the day started. All right, we're going to get to the chat because I'm rambling. Harlan's in the house. What's going on? Good morning. Congrats on the milestone and all the accolades. All downhill from here, I guess. And that's like, now what? And now what? So, which is one of the popular questions. Well, now what? Two million is out of the question. No, because I've got enough 88 tops. I don't need any more. I've got plenty of 89 tops. We don't need any more. We don't need volume of, of that stuff. Now we just fill in like, of course, I'm still going to collecting. Somebody asked me on the field. They're like, so what's like, what's the end goal? And I'm like, I'm just a collector. I collect things. I collect things. And it just happens to be Cubs baseball cards. There is no end. Well, and really 1 million Cubs isn't the end goal. You know, it's not like I'm reaching a million Cubs and then quitting. Like I'm still going to Tops Heritage comes out this coming week. I'm going to be collecting Topps Heritage Cubs cards. Um, I'm going to, I've got some Bowman Chrome coming in the mail. I'm um, Adon Sanchez cards. Um, bought some stuff on Facebook this week, and those should be in my mailbox soon. Uh, you know, I'm still going to, I've got a lot. There's a lot of cards that I don't have that I'm going to be looking for. So uh, the journey, it's just a, 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 a new step in the journey. Now there's not like a goal, like, because the goal isn't to collect all of the Cubs because that's impossible um, with all the one of ones and, and, you know, some of them are really expensive. So uh, it's just collect what I don't have and I don't need to have everything. I don't need, I'm not a rainbow collector with the exception of Adon Sanchez and kind of Riley Thompson. Um, I'm more focused on the Adon Sanchez right now, but uh you know, I'll go fill with right. Like with Riley, I have his super fractor and his reds and there's a lot less than Adon Sanchez, Adon Sanchez. I'm like, I've got all the easy stuff. Now I need the super fractors and the f there's a couple of five. I've got a couple of reds, but there's like five of them. I got like two of them. Uh, thank you, Brian. What's going on? Congratulations. Can't wait to hear all about your day. I'm also excited to see what's next. And I kind of, yeah, kind of went into that. It's just, we're still going to collect. The next phase of this project is to get them organized. Um, you know, I don't need, I'm, I'm looking at uh, 85 tops, Jim Fry. I don't need 300 of them, but what do you do with 85 tops? Like, <laughs> you know, so I don't know, like some of the junk wax, I don't know what I'll do with it. But if somebody like, Hey, I need an 85 tops, Jim Fry. Well, Hey, you can have mine. Um, Matty ice. Good morning. Driving and listening. Go Cubs. Go. Uh, double A cards. Congrats. Well deserved. Just goes to show good things happen to good people. Thank you. I appreciate that. Mario's in the house. Thank you, sir. Orlando is here. Hello. Congratulations. Thank you. I appreciate that. Bowman 1951 Sports Card Adventures. I was just about to say that. Terry's in the house. Good morning. I was kind of expecting you to sleep in a bit today. I thought I might, but... I couldn't, I couldn't sleep. Um, I actually, surprisingly, I slept better Thursday night than I slept last night, which is like, wouldn't you think like nerves? I can't sleep. I'm throwing out the first pitch at Wrigley field tomorrow, but no, I slept great last night. Not so much, which is weird. Because, so we're driving back and we wanted to get back uh, to Madison by like nine. Uh, we had some friends uh, taking care of biscuit throughout the day, but it's like, we, you know, nine o'clock, we're old. We need to get back. Um, so, and we had, you know, I had a couple beers at Wrigley. We went to the brick house after the game, met up with my mom and cousins and uh, Henry from uh, I, I've known Henry for 20 years from my Macomb days. We were homies, Macomb homies. And uh, he's out in LA now. Haven't seen him in 
like 15 years. Uh, so he uh, reached out to me on Facebook. He's like, hey, I'm going to be in Chicago. You go, go into any games? And I'm like, yeah, actually, I'm throwing out the first pitch tomorrow. He's like, dude. He's like, all right, I'm coming to the game. Here's my number. Text me. So we were able to meet up after the game at Brick House uh, and hang out for a little bit. Um, so we left it at like six drop, dropped Scott off on the way back. And like that last leg, I, I wasn't full. I was like trying to catch up on social media stuff. And, uh, like, I'm just like, my eyes are just like, uh, heavy. And I'm like, oh, the Iowa game is on tonight. I want to watch that. So we get home and, and my wife's like ready. Like she's like, I'm getting ready for bed. I watched the Iowa game. They were, I think I was at halftime maybe when we got home it was before nine. Um, and then they started making a run and I'm like, oh, I got to stay up and watch this. But I'm like, I can't. And then of course you get ready. You, you brush your teeth, you get into bed and I can't fall asleep. And I'm looking at my phone Then I finally fell asleep. And then I woke up wide awake at 4 a.m. And I was probably looking at trying to catch up on notifications for an hour at 4 a.m. Um, I fell asleep for like an hour and was up at six and I've been up since six. Uh, it took me about an hour to catch up on Twitter, um, which was absolutely insane. Like it, it's the notify, like we were sitting in our seats and I was showing my buddy and I would just hit refresh and it'd be like all these notifications. And then I'm like, well, watch this. He's like, oh my God. He's like, I'm like, that. this is all like right now. This is re real time. Insane. Insane. So now I know like when, when you tweet it like a celebrity, like somebody that's always, that's, that gets that type of notifications every single day, that's why they don't respond to you because it's like, how do you keep up? How do you keep up? Matty Ice, what's going on? Thank you, sir. Nate Kelly, good morning. Appreciate that. Unicorn Cupcake. Thank you. Merle says, surprised you have time to chat with the little people today. You are my couch people. Always have time for the couch people. The question of the day, did the pitch bounce? No. No. So the first pitch. Uh, and, and again, like there were there were parts of the day that I had no idea. Like I was just, and I didn't want to know. Like I didn't, I went in. I went in with, okay, I'm going to throw the first pitch and they're going to give me my one millionth card. That's all I was, you know, I didn't want to expect more than that. Um, so like the Jersey was blew me away. The marquee blew me away. And then uh, uh, we're down on the field and uh, watching the Dodgers take infield and uh, Jim who works for the Cubs comes over and he's like, Hey, come on, come on into the dugout. So I go into the Cubs dugout on game day and it's Jordan Wicks starting pitcher who also happened to be my 999,999th Cubs card. And uh, the, the one of one, which I think I have it right here because I just scanned it the other night. Uh, I picked this up at the Madison card show from Scott, one of my dealers. Thank you, Scott. Uh, so this is from 20. This is the, oh, this is this year's 2024 tops baseball stars. And this is the one of one auto. There you go. One of one, Jordan Wick. So I'm like, hey, ironically, you are my penultimate card. And he like uh, found the tweet and, and congratulated uh, on Twitter yesterday. Um, so I'm like, uh, do you have any tips on throwing the first pitch? We're at 300 total viewers, smashing a previous all-time record uh, between YouTube and, and Twitter. We're at 300. Um, so I asked Jordan Wicks, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm throwing out the first pitch. I haven't thrown a baseball in like 20 years. What's your advice? And he said, aim high. And that's like the best advice. And so he's like, you know, a lot of guys, you know, they, they want to throw a strike and it's usually going to go lower than where you aim. And I'm like, that is tremendous. So I took that to heart and I took it a little too literally. I aimed high and it sailed and it sailed. It didn't 50 cent sail, but it was up high. Clark had to, Clark had to get up. It was a, it was a wild pitch, 
it certainly was no passed ball. It was a wild pitch. I'll take I'll take it. The dude before me, like, I'm like, Shh, that's a freaking good first pitch. He's been practicing. I wasn't. I had six, seven inches of snow to freaking shovel this week. I couldn't practice my throws. Although Tom, I see Tom's in the chat. Tom offered to, to help. I had people offer at spring training. I'm like, ah, I'll be good. Classic last, last words. So I did sail it, but it didn't go into the stands. Didn't go in the dirt. Just a wild pitch. One gets away from all of us, right? Even the best. So I aimed a little too high. There's no dirt. So what do you think? So this is this is my first pitch ball. This is my first pitch ball. I was thinking about doing something to commemorate the day, like a, a shadow, like not a shadow box, but like a, a frame, like a custom framework with like the ball, uh, the card, um, and like maybe photos. I don't know. I was thinking about signing the ball, signing my own ball. Is, is that vain? Is that too vain? But otherwise, it's just a ball. This is just a ball. I have a dozen in my backpack right now. So I've got to keep this. Is that a dirt? No, no. Oh, there's a little scuff mark. So it did, it did, it did get away, but I think Clark got a glove on it. So yeah, there is a little bit. So we can cover that up. Sweet spot's still clean. I was thinking of signing, which baseballs are hard to sign. And then uh like just first pitch, four, five, twenty-four. So at least you know, hey, that's the first pitch ball. Otherwise, it's just another baseball. And then uh, Jordan signed a ball for me in the dugout. So that was cool. And then uh, and then after after the whole thing, Carrie Wood comes by. And I'm like, oh, my God, this is freaking cool. And we're just shooting the shit for a couple minutes. Um, and Carrie was one of my – well, I picked up last month's show. I picked up that of five auto. Of Kerry Wood. Red light 34. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Merle says, looked like your arm stopped halfway through the pitch. I think that's because I immediately, as soon as I let the ball go, I think that was just editing because my reaction, because once I let it go, I like knew it went too high. And I'm like, oh, I think I did that. So I think that's why they cut it early. They didn't want me to, they didn't want my first pitch make the 50 cent rounds thank you for for not doing that thank you tom what's next a million beers <laughs> no <laughs> no dave good morning thank you ed's in the house what's happening thank you sir appreciate that and it was a it was a great game to boot we got to sing the song and wave the w uh otani frequently hit home runs that didn't count with the angels when does the sorting party begin, right? So I'm still going through my uh, my Goodwill palette. I'm, I'm down to the last couple boxes. Have it, it was kind of a dud of a Goodwill palette, but there was some nice stuff. You know, I showed off a couple of the things uh, this week. So um, once I get that cleaned up, I, I think I'm going to put more of a focus on, on the Cubs collection now that I can even, I mean, really in reality, the last year and a half, um, I've kind of, what well, really going back, even before I went into cards full time, the last two years, I've kind of scaled back on the Cubs collection because I was getting a lot of 88 Donruss at 89 tops that, uh, it's like, I don't need a whole bunch of this. So like, once I got to 900,000, it's like, okay, I'm going to take the last hundred thousand and be a little more selective, um, with what I acquire. Um, but I also like kind of laid back on the sorting aspect as well. Although I did trading card database, um, I have been uh, uploading a lot of my Cubs on on trading card database. I think I'm at like nine thousand total cards um, logged on trading card database, of which um, thirty three hundred I think are unique. So climbing the leaderboard, but. I'm thinking it's taken me this. It's taken me this long to log nine thousand. I've still got to like sort and log another nine hundred ninety thousand. It's gonna be a while. You know, it took six and a half years to collect a million cards. It's gonna take me sixty-five years to organize them. 
I mean, I don't have that time. I don't have 65 years. I uh, think you should have timed your 1 millionth card for something during a warmer month. I thought about that a couple times. Uh, but I'm glad I did because it was really starting to be painful to really stretch this thing out. Because I really did stretch it out over the last few months. Um, so I'm glad I did it when I did it. I'm glad I did it when I did it. SoCal guy, 1967. Who do you want to play you in the movie about your journey? Oh, I don't know. Nobody. I, there, there doesn't need, the world doesn't need a movie about my Cubs baseball card collecting. Uncle Rich, good morning. Merle says, I'm looking forward to pulling the second super fractor back, but um, sports card ripping teacher. Says, you did well out there. I saw that bear tap his left leg, wanting to pitch a little outside. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Zach says, make sure you add it to TCDB. I probably can because it's got like a real number, right? It's actually, it's a tops official tops card. Merle says, are we under the friends or strangers? <laughs> friends or strangers? Brian, I need a base. You got it. Hey, speaking of, I need a base. So, uh, we we went i didn't eat much yesterday because i had like i think maybe even though i didn't feel like i had nerves I, my stomach realized it and it's like yeah you don't need to eat anything um so i had like uh i didn't eat anything before we left and then as we got uh closer to pick up uh my buddy i'm like uh and i didn't say anything. i should have said something so we would have stopped at the gas station down the street but i didn't say anything and then we're getting closer to the city and I'm like, I asked my wife, I'm like, do you have a, like a, a, pro, a protein bar? Cause usually she carries protein bars and stuff in her purse. And she's like, no. And I'm like, shit, I didn't eat anything. <laughs> uh, so we stopped at a Walgreens, like somewhere in Chicago, like on Irving park road. And I got like a cookie, like one of those protein cookies. Like I just need some protein. Keep me tied over until I have a hot dog. So then I had a hot dog. Where was I going with the story? Oh, I need a base. So we go for a hot dog run in like the fourth inning. And uh, we're just kind of hanging. I think we met up with my mom and my cousins. And uh, my wife was going to get a, a T-shirt for our dog sitter. So I'm like, well, I want to go check out the Cubs Authentic store. And I'm like, it'd be cool to get a baseball from like a game used ball from today's game. And then I saw the sign. Game used baseball, and I thought it said game used baseballs, but maybe, maybe that, maybe that wasn't the case. Now that I think about it, but it, the sign said four hundred dollars, and I'm like, holy crap! It might have been game used bases, but I could have swore it said baseballs, and I wouldn't think a baseball would be four hundred dollars, unless it's like an Otani hit or something. Then I could see that being four hundred, but like a foul ball from Miles Mastroboni, I can't see that being a four hundred dollar ball. Um, so I'm just kind of looking at the stuff and there was a guy and he's like, uh, the, the worker was like, there's a long list for the baseballs. And he's like, well, what is, well, well, what else do you have? And they have bases and the bases were 400. So it must've been, I don't know, maybe the baseballs were 40 and I read it wrong or maybe it said bases. I don't know. But so he bought a base and, um, I didn't, it's like, I don't want to put my name on the list for a baseball. So, and I've got enough bases. Um, uh, Mario says, where do we order those from me? <laughs> and they're, they're zero. Uh, thank you, Orlando. Definitely need a base card. You got it. Save one base card for me. You got it. Red light wants one. Merle says, I need one to complete my set. There you go. I wonder what, uh, so this is what BM one M dash BT. Okay. Uh, let's see. Harlan says 70 years from now, someone will buy it at a goodwill pal, right? There's going to be someday and there's only a hundred, but someday there's going to be one in like a random box at goodwill or somewhere. And they're like, what the hell is this? Or maybe it's going to be like the George Bush card from 1990 tops. You could have a gold mine here. Herman says, so now if someone asks, what is your favorite Cubs card? I mean, I've got my own super fractor. That's a pretty easy answer now. And I had no idea what the one millionth Cub card was going to be. 
And of course, they asked me like some things. And I'm like, you know, Cap Anson is like my, that's like the grail card. Like that's the card that, uh, and here's the, here's the thing about the whole day, like going into and why it blew my wildest expectations. Like originally, like I was on pace to hit a million, like around the national either last year or two years ago. And it's like, uh, this would be perfect to hit. Uh, we're over 400 live viewers crushing we hit 300 today for the first time we hit 400 between twitter and youtube um hit the like button uh if you're watching and subscribe to the channel if you're new um where was i at where was i at um so the the cap anson and i i was like on pace to hit it at the national like the the, the original thought of like i was gonna go in i was gonna do similar to what i did do a countdown on twitter and then go to the national and find my 1 million. Like, here's the 1 millionth Cubs card. And that was it. That was my plan. And then Tops reached out. And they're like, hey, we want to give you the 1 millionth card. And I'm like, you got it. <laughs> you got it. And so they asked me, like, what, you know, what's your dream card and all that? And I'm like, well, it's the Cap Hansen, Allen and Ginter. And they're like, that might be tough to find. I'm like, yeah, they're out there. <laughs> I've got faith. But my own super fractor. One, from tops, one ups the Cap Anson. I can go out and buy a Cap Anson. I can't go out and buy my own Super Fractor from tops. So, uh, pretty freaking cool. Uh, but I can make the Cap Anson like, you know, like my celebrate. It's not like a number of. It's it's not like it's going to be one million one. It's just going to be like this is my my gift to myself. The Cap Anson, Allen and Ginter from 1887. And I got to find one, and I want a low grade because I I still have a lot of holes to fill in my Cubs collection. So I can't spend a whole lot of money. Uh, like on a seven, you know, I'm not paying whatever that goes for, or a five or a four. But I'd like a one, but I don't want it to be like completely beat. I want it to present well for a one. So that's... I guess that's another phase. That's another goal is to to find a Cap Anson that uh, fits my collection, fits my wants, my price. Uh, Steve said, I followed you all day yesterday. Couldn't be happier for you, my friend. Thank you, Steve. It was a lot of fun. And we got to hang out with uh, Luke Little's parents came and met us at Brick House after the game. And I figured like Luke finished the game on Tuesday, started Wednesday's game. And I'm like, he's not gonna. I we're probably not gonna see Luke pitch on on Friday, uh, but it was great to see Eck and Billy, uh, Luke's mom and dad. They came out, uh, hung out with us at Brick House after the game. Uh, Steve says, "I'm surprised you didn't sleep in that jersey they gave you." I did take it off. In fact, I was uh, when we got to the Brick House, I had a uh, glass or not a glass, but a cup, a cup of of beer, and they fill them pretty pretty high. And so I took a swig and I spilled some and my wife like looks at me you know you know what your wife does you know the the look your wife gives you when you spill something she she she's like take that jersey off <laughs> uh let's see tom says to harlan many collections oh harlan's many comment of the year <laughs> and that's the comment of the year it, one of these cards will pop up in a goodwill palette orlando says bo needs to wear the jersey for every live stream i thought about it but I don't want to get coffee. It's a white jersey. I don't want to get coffee stained up because I'm notorious for staining shirts with coffee, staining everything with coffee. Herman says, only issue here is that it can't be a true rookie, not pack released. It's an XRC. It does not have the rookie logo. It does not have the RC logo. Dear Man says, I haven't updated my bio. Well, let's do that. Am I on Twitter? Am I still at, uh, oh, I'm still at 999,997 because I, I unleashed 998,999 and 999, uh, on the drive. So let's, let's do this right now. One million. There we go. So it's now updated. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Where are we at? Philly Joe says, good morning. Congrats. Love the card. Great job by Todd. I mean, didn't they, 
we'll use some baseball speak. They hit it out of the park, like grand slam. I mean, just amazing, just amazing. I mean, and and you know, a lot tops gets a lot of heat, um, especially lately. But to do this for just an average Joe collector like me, like how freaking cool is that? That tops they put a lot of time into this, like creating the card, flying a film crew to my house, coming to Wrigley Field. They had a whole crew, their content, their social media guy, uh, Ryan, who's their product manager, uh, Morgan and Christian and Bloom, like all these guys. So uh, just for just for a dude that hangs out and talks baseball cards in his basement, pretty freaking cool. Uh, Merle says, according to my Twitter feed yesterday, nothing else happened in the world. I was, you know, I did, I was, I was looking for like this morning. I'm like, did I will win? Because I fell asleep. Well, I tried to fall asleep before the guy didn't have the game on when I went to bed. And I'm like, I can't find any, any news. There was an earthquake in New York and it's like, can't find any news. Not on Twitter, at least. Uh, Merle says, yes, fanatics tops made it better. Orlando says sports card radio said they wanted to interview. I heard that. I think somebody posted that in Facebook. And of course it yesterday was a whirlwind. So I don't know what that means. I don't know. Do, if they reach out to me, like I'm not going to go ask them like, Hey, have me on your show. If they reach out to me, I'll, I'll come on if they reach out to me, but I'm not just going to cold call and be like, Hey, I heard you <laughs> want me on your show. Uh, Porter says, good morning. It's pretty special that you were able to get an MLB jersey fulfilled in 2024. Pro players don't even have that luxury. Yeah, how about that? Zach, thank you. Appreciate it. So cool to see you on my Tops Instagram feed yesterday. I had people that like don't even, uh, we're seeing it on Instagram. And I'm like, I know, crazy. Dan says, not too late. Not too late today. I was up early. Uh, Dan says, so excited for you to go down into history. It couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. Thank you. Appreciate that. He says, Bo only gets fired up when you hit him where it counts with a beer bat. Yeah. Hit me in the, hit me in the crown jewels with a plastic beer bat. And I'm going to get a little angry. Crawley. Johnny boy cards. Good morning. Thank you. Appreciate it. Turkey cards in the house. What's going on? Blaine's here. Congrats. Thank you. Santiago. Welcome back to the North side Dodgers. Yes, nine to seven. How about that? Uh, did you get to meet Bartman? No, I have not met Bartman. You know, I feel so bad for that guy, but I think like, I think enough time has passed, but I get like, he's probably just pissed off at Chicago. Like you a-holes, like I was a diehard fan and you turned on me and that sucks, but hopefully like he can forgive and, uh, and come back. In, in in the public, like he still lives in the Chicago area, but he's very to himself. Uh, my wife did slam the door on two million. That was funny, and that was like just completely my own. no. <laughs> that was in the green room after the when we were doing like the post post video stuff. Uh, Bradley says, "How about a million different? There are there are no such thing as a million different Cubs." Um, trading card database, I think, has what two hundred and 15 or 218,000 unique Cubs cards dating back to 1887. That includes minor league cards. Um, so it is an impossibility. And I think Tops did say unique on, on a tweet or something, uh, which is not correct. And I've stated that since the beginning. So I'm not, I'm not lying. <laughs> I've said it from the beginning. Uh, I have many duplicates. I've shown off my many duplicates, my 1978 Tops Rick Rushels. My 87 Ryan Sandbergs. So how many unique do I have? I would probably say in the ballpark of 50% of the unique Cubs cards on the various checklists. Because, and some of them are, and I've counted custom cards. Like, hey, they're Cubs cards. They're, it's my, I made them. Like, they're custom to me. Um, but it's not like, and you can say, oh, well, those don't count. Okay, fine. I I probably have another 200 real cards that can count my collection my rules right 
Uh, Mr. Archer, good morning. Congratulations. What a cool day you had. Thank you. Appreciate that. Harlan says, time to go for all 200,000 plus unique Cubs cards. I mean, I will, like, it's not a goal. It's not a goal to collect a certain percent, like 100%, like having the complete Cubs is impossible because there's one of ones that have never surfaced. There's one of ones that people will never give up. Um, so it's just, it's, it's basically an impossible, nothing's impossible. Well, yeah, some things are impossible, but, uh, it's, it's, it's very unpossible. It's very impossible to get all the unique. And I'm not like, I don't need 75% or 80%. It would be cool. Like once I, if I ever get them logged on TCDB, be like, Hey, I'm at 52% of the complete run. Like can I get to fit and, and I'm a numbers guy. So that's probably something that never say never, maybe someday once I get them organized, which is the next step, be like, Oh, now I want 80% or 70% or whatever that number might be of all the unique cards. But to me, like <clears throat> the, the T2O's like the different backs, like, I don't need the rare backs of a T206. If it's the same image on front, that's that's all I care about. So I'll take the Sweet Capital and the Piedmonts. Uh, I don't need a Tolstoy back. Um, you know, I'll see some of those cards for sale in tobacco groups, and it's like, oh, hey, I don't have that. Oh, it's a Tolstoy back. It's, you know, $800 for a crappy condition one. Uh, Kyle says, good morning, and congrats on an awesome day. We'll catch the replay. Thank you, sir. Brian Wolf in the house. What's going on? Music on your Cubs memory videos is soft as hell. And I, by design, I didn't, I didn't want like a freaking rock video, right? I didn't want like hardcore. I didn't want my neighbor's metal band on, on the background of the video. I wanted it to be soft. That was the, that was the goal. So I'm glad you said that because that's what I was aiming, aiming for. I was aiming for soft as hell. Like that's, I guess. So what do you, like, if I type in, like, I'm looking for background music, soft as hell would have been something that, that I was looking for. So I'm glad, I'm glad that you said that, because that's what I wanted. Uh, will you stop counting? That has to feel good. I'm divided on this. Will I stop? Like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Because I like the cardo meter, but I don't want it to be like now it doesn't mean the cardo meter. If I still count after a million, does it mean it? Like, what does it mean? I mean, I guess it could be like there's no end goal, kind of like the Shano meter, which is what I, I ripped off the Shano meter. Like, there was no end goal, it was his daily batting average 286. Tomorrow it's 289, 284. There was no, like, it wasn't like, we're not going to get to a thousand. So I guess I could run it and basically just use the Shaunometer principle. Like, it's just your daily count. You're not going anywhere. It's just here, here's what it is. But I'm going to be doing trading. I'll, I'll give cards to kids at Cubs convention at spring training. So then I'd have to subtract. And there's, I don't want to do all that math, right? Speaking of math, RS math is in the house. While Tops gave you a great card, my guess of your millionth card was auto booklet with one million Cubs text and autos of Jenkins, Maddox, Rizzo, Sandberg, Bryant, Dawson, Grace, Lee, Smith. Hey, that would have been cool too. Uh, low Roller Scratcher is in the house. It is Wrestling Mania. Wrestling Mania is tonight. I'll probably watch some of it tomorrow. I was actually, I like, it's obviously yesterday was a blur. And so I'm like, oh crap, I was... Uh, on Facebook and, and one of my buddies, uh, David, who's Steve knows down in Arizona, he's at WrestleMania this weekend. And he's like with Liv Morgan and, uh, Mandy Rose and, uh, hanging out at like uh, wrestling con and, and all that stuff. It's like, Oh shit. I missed the first night of WrestleMania. And I'm like, Oh wait, it's Friday. Uh, so yeah, I'll have to watch some WrestleMania tonight. Uh, RS Matt says, still going to carry an ad to your Cubs count sign even without a goal beyond a million. And that's what I kind of just went into. Like, I don't know. I'm still like, do I want to do the math on adding and subtracting? I don't I don't think so. 
I guess maybe at, at some point when I get everything logged on TC, maybe I could do it again. I don't know. But as you heard my wife say in the top's Instagram reel, she's already said no on 2 million, which is fine by me because I don't need 2 million Cubs cards. Uh, are you going to post your baseball first pitch video on YouTube? I don't have it. And I, I don't know if I want, like people just pick it apart because it, it wasn't a strike, but I didn't bounce it. That's all that matters. Uh, Merle says Bo had to be trending yesterday. Matt Like is in the house. Yes, go Hawks w tomorrow, right? Tomorrow's the championship game against, is it South Carolina versus Iowa? Justin is here. What's going on? Such an awesome experience. Huge congrats. Thank you, sir. Dwayne is here. Good morning. Congrats. Thank you. Pepino Man, what is up? The Cubs won. Yes. Oh, and Pepino Man's a Dodgers fan, so that means a lot coming from you. That means a lot. Thank you, Pepino Man. Orlando says, what a great day. Better than an Anson card for the million. I agree. Like your own super factor. Mike, the baseball card life. What's up? If you put a million cards in nine pocket pages, you'd need 1,250 binders. 800 cards per binder. That's a lot of cards and binders. It is. You think about it. We're at 500. 500 live viewers. First time ever between YouTube and uh, and Twitter. I don't know what's our... Our YouTube count's probably the same. I would imagine a lot of these view, viewer numbers are coming from uh, uh, Twitter. But yeah, it, it, it you think about it, it's like, well, 1,200, that's not a big number. But get one binder. Fill one binder. Uh, fill one binder of 800 cards. Looks like we have about the 70 on, on the YouTube stream. So like 400 on Twitter. Um, but put one 800 card binder together and then say, I have 1,249 to go. And then all of a sudden you've got 20 binders on your shelf. You're like, I only have 1,230 to go. And then you realize the scope of a million. If you lay them down, like this, and end over end, there you go. It would span over 55 miles, 55 miles. Just imagine driving 55 miles on those baseball cards the entire drive. That's a million cards. Standard. That doesn't include like minis. That's your standard two and a half by three and a half inch trading card. Uh, with the way you released the ball, was worried where it went. Yeah, it was a shitty release, wasn't it? I just, I should have practiced. Sam says, I was at the game yesterday. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. Uncle Rich says, Bo is the biggest honor you will ever receive as a collector. You brought style, grace, and a love of the experience to all of us. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, we've all lived this experience through and you have exceeded any goal you might have set. Absolutely. Like yesterday was beyond my wildest expectation. Beyond anything I expected for sure. Andy Max says you got to make a shadow box so you can easily open it up. That's a good thought too. Yeah. Cause if I put it in a frame and then it's like, well, let me see it. It's like, well, it's on my wall. Here's a picture. What if I like, I could, so here's a funny story. So here's here's a funny story. So I'll show you the card for for viewers that are are just joining. So here's the card. The it's a one of one. It's an official Topps Chrome Super Fractor of me. And uh, so when we were in the green room afterwards, somebody joked, like, uh, "Are you going to get it graded?" And so we all had a good laugh. And then one of the guys from Topps said. He goes, I actually know what they'll do. I know what PSA will do. They'll call me and ask, is this, is this a legit card? And so he's like, so they'll, they'll grade it. So if you want to sub it, they'll, they'll slab it for you. So uh, I, I might do that. I might submit it just, just to have it in a slab. Uh, I thought that was kind of a kind of cool inside, inside info um, on that process. Papino, Papino man says, sign it. Oh, on the ball. Sign the ball. Uh, and today, the chat is not nearly as important as your first person recollection of the day. Thank you. Yeah. So it was. Uh, it was. It was wild. So less paying attention to the chat and more bow. Brian says you gotta sign your ball. Okay. Two people have said it. 
How many new followers did you gain on Twitter? Quite a lot, a lot, and Instagram. Does Carrie collect? Uh, I don't think so. We didn't really talk about. Uh, we didn't really talk about that. Uh, Jordan does. Not, Jordan Wicks does not. Uh, he did tell me he has a jumbo, uh, a jumbo card of I think his rookie card. Like he's got like a jumbo version of it uh, hanging on his wall. And I'm like, what? What's your collection? He's like, I don't really have a collection. So we'll have to. Hey, I'll talk to Ethan. I'm like, Ethan, you gotta get Jordan into into collecting. Uh, how much space does a million cards take up? So I have my storage room, uh, is about 600 square feet. I've got 12 or 13 storage, like heavy duty industrial size storage racks in there. Uh, so that's, and there's more than a million in that room. It's not just Cubs. Um, but it takes up a lot, takes up a lot of space. Takes up plus the 48 that are in my showcase and the stack over here that I've been photographing. A million bears. How about that? So my 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 cousin, uh, my cousin is uh, has been inspired, and in, in him and I actually collected together. He's a few years older than me, uh, and he lived with uh, he lived with me and my mom and dad for one for one year growing up. I was in fourth grade, I think. He was, I think, just starting high school. So he was in into cards, and uh, so we collected a lot. And uh, he's like, man, you've kind of inspired me to collect Bears cards. So he's going, he's like, but I don't want a million. And he's like, uh, I was thinking about getting every tops base card for the Bears. And I'm like, oh, I can certainly help you with that. And I think I have, I've got a couple boxes because I've got some Bears cards that I always just kind of, every once in a while, I'll just get a hair, hair up my arse. And I'll be like, I'm going to set the Bears aside. Um because being a Cubs collector, you know a lot of Chicago collectors. And like, yeah, if I want to do a trade, I've got Bears on hand. So help him out with that. But no, no Bears collection, no Blackhawks, no Bulls. Uh, Dan says, I know you've seen Kerry several times at the charity, so I can assume he remembers and knows you. Has Barry uh, Kerry been to Club 400? Yeah, he's actually been, I think he's been a couple times. Um, and then I wanted to go, he did a like an alumni event. Um, his his uh his Woody's winter warm-up uh stopped around stopped at COVID. So 2020 was the last year that he had the warm-up. And then in 2021, 2022, there were no conventions uh and then kicked back last year in 2023. But he didn't do the Woody's winter warm-up with the Cubs convention. He had a separate deal later in the year uh at um I think it was I think it's it's actually held at the uh, like the front office next to Wrigley. Um, so he did that last year and then he did like a an alumni event this actually this week. I think it was um was it Thursday? It might have been Thursday. No, no, no. There was no game on Thursday. Maybe it was Wednesday. Might have been Wednesday of this week. Um I'll have to ask because I think Crawley was gonna go. So uh but I didn't hear much about it. Um but I but I wanted to to go to that and he's He's such a down to earth, like super cool guy. Kerry Wood, awesome, awesome guy, and he's such a great ambassador for the Cubs and the city of Chicago with with all he does with with his charity. Uh, Todd says, "Congrats on your amazing day. It was fun to follow along with you. I hope the negative Twitter clowns didn't take away from your experience. No, um, and I know some of the and and I knew. Here's my here's my. I was actually surprised there wasn't more Twitter. Like I was." I was shocked at how positive the reactions were on Twitter. Um, I was expecting like, oh, he doesn't have a million cards. And there were some of those clowns. Uh, oh, it doesn't count because there's duplicates and, you know, that BS. But um, I think that just stems from they didn't think of it or jealousy. I don't know. Uh, but I saw some of that and it's like you just in one ear out the other. Uh, Brian says we should discuss food and biscuit for all the new listeners. <laughs> right, 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 right. I didn't. So, uh, biscuits, my dog, uh, you'd think like, oh, you're in Chicago. You're going to eat some, some good food. No, I just had, I had a cookie from Walgreens <laughs> for breakfast. And then I had, uh, just a hot dog with nothing on it, nothing on it. Cause I was like, so like 
uh, a few of my friends from high one seventh, one seventh of my graduating high school class was in attendance. Now that's only five out of 35, but Hey, so a few of my high school friends came down. Scott and I grew up across the street from each other. He's who I picked up, uh, on the way. Uh, and then, uh, three of our friends, uh, drove up from the, the quad city. Well, actually Brandy lives like in Gurney and then Justin and Amber live, uh, in the, uh, quad cities area where I grew around where I grew up. So, uh, they came up. So meeting up with them. Uh, so I just, uh, when I was like talking to, to family, my wife was like, I'm going to, we're going to go get, do you want And I'm like, give me a hot dog. And I just ate the hot dog. It was good. Like just, just a regular hot dog. It was good, but I was hungry. <laughs> and then I had one, one cheese stick at uh brick house. And then we're driving back. We uh, dropped, got off and uh, went to the gas station. I'm like, I just, I'll have a gas station dinner. I just, and my wife's like, we can, there's like probably restaurants. I'm like, not on this stretch of Randall road. It's like, there's no like drive throughs. You got to go a few miles down. I'm like, I just want to get home. I'll eat a gas station sandwich. I'm cool. So that was my food talk. Very uneventful food, food day, which is okay. It's okay. Uh, I did not see Otani. Did not see Otani. Uh, Brian says, I heard AIH Sports thinks there's some hanky panky in your actual account. <laughs> we'll be video today exposing you. Well, hopefully he comes over and counts them. Like anyone that wants to expose my actual count can come over and count them one by one. And I'm not going to help. Like you have to do it on your own. And you're probably, they're probably going to be disappointed because the count's probably over a million. And yes, duplicates count. Low roller scratcher, just like Bruce, Bruce Springsteen, born in the USA. John in the house. Good morning. Congrats on reaching a million. Now I should guess Thompson when we play name that player. Right. Let's play name that player. Who's this guy? Who's this guy? Name that player. Pepino man says, I knew you were throwing high. You were tipping your pitches. I know. We're over 600 live viewers. Uh, I'm really happy. Thank you, Victor. What an amazing story. It was, uh, yeah, any beyond, beyond what I ever expected. Just crazy day. Like that's, that's, that's all I can say. Uh, is top selling your own baseball cards? I don't think so. They're pretty rare. Uh, no Dunkin' breakfast sandwich on your big day. How can you forget? Yeah, I just, I wasn't even, it wasn't, uh, the thought of breakfast didn't cross my mind until, I realized I didn't eat anything. And then, and then all of a sudden that's how like, it's like, you're not hungry. You just go. And then all of a sudden when you think that's why you can't think. And I think that's why, see, that's why I don't think my wife is like, why don't you think? Because thinking really screws you up sometimes. <laughs> I was just, per I was perfectly content not eating. Until I thunk. And when I thunk that I realized that I didn't eat anything, I became super hungry. And now it's like, I got to eat. And now it's your soul, like your brain is focused on eating. Stop at Walgreens. I need a cookie. Uh, Cooter says, time to order binders and sheets to start building a master team set. I recommend all vintage, tops, flagship, Bowman, and Heritage. Score, Upper Deck, and Donruss can stay in boxes. I agree. The like I'm torn on that because I love I'm more of a player like I'm more of a player collector than a set collector so to me having them sorted by player is kind of for me I think it's cooler like how many Doug Desenzo cards do you have well that's why I want to get it logged because I like and then I can go buy the nut Cubs buy the numbers so how many care because in players will actually ask me like if I go like Sam at Cubs convention and I'm talking to Les Lancaster, he's like, you have a million cards, I'm like a million Cubs cards. Like how many Les Lancasters do you have? It's like, a, probably, you played in like the height of the junk wax era. So I probably have 7,000 in your three years that you were with the Cubs. 
Uh, Tops now releasing today. The Bo Relic card comes with an actual 1987 Tops Cubs common card in it from the collection. Number of one million or less. I love it. Andy Mack would love a base card. Christian, put me down for a card. Ron Davis, what's going on? How much of the Tops card stuff did you know about going into yesterday? Very little. I knew nothing. In fact, I didn't even know where to meet them until like five minutes before we met, which my wife was not pleased with my uh, preparedness on that. Um, no, I so I knew I knew I was throwing out the first pitch, which I didn't find out about until the tops filmers came to my house and gave me a sheet of questions they were going to ask. And like half of them regarded the first pitch. And I'm like, oh, crap. Um, so, uh, I knew I was throwing out the first pitch. I knew they were giving me my 1 millionth cub card. Uh, I knew I was going to be on the field, you know, for like infield and, and batting practice before the game. Um, I knew that I might meet a player or two. Um, but like none of that was guaranteed. Like the, the player stuff was not guaranteed. So, um. That's like all I, I didn't know what card it was going to be. Um, didn't know any player like Kerry would be was was awesome. Um, and of course, in going into the dugout, meeting Jordan Wicks, that was cool. Uh, Sam says, any 2016 Tops Now World Series? I don't think so. I have very few Tops Now cards. Um, I never really got into into Tops Now. Um, I have quite well. I say I have a few. I have I don't know. I have a handful of tops now Cubs cards. Um, I think I've got one of the road to opening day sets. I've got some of the, uh, I might have a couple from the world series year. You know, I don't think I have any of the number parallels or anything like that. I don't have any of the autos. Um, I was never really into the tops now releases unless I was there. Um, there's a, there was a couple games where I was there and there was a tops now card that came out. Uh, so of course I picked those up, but for the most part, the most re I got a Shota Imanaga. Um, I got it for like four bucks at a card show. So if I find them for you know a good price, uh, I'll buy them. Dwayne needs one for his PC. Matt Like says, I'd love a base card. It will jumpstart my journey to acquiring one million Bo Spencer cards. Ryan says, 400 live viewers, time to plug our eBay stores. Yeah, well, yeah, now that you said it, there you go. Uh, low roller scratcher says 400 viewers buy Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and crypto. We're now at 659 live viewers between Twitter and YouTube, and that number keeps rising. So, welcome to the show. Thanks for tuning in. Talking about my one millionth card for those that may just be joining in. Uh, they actually, this is an actual Zion Cases custom made this small case holding my one millionth Cubs card. Ops logo, my name, one millionth Cubs card, and uh, the card, the Super Fractor. And there is a base version of this. It's even got its own number, 1M-BT. I'll have to go to uh, uh, Trading Card Database and get that log. Um, where are we at? Where are we at? Stooks in the house. What's going on? Peeps is here. Good morning. Cubbies are on a roll. I love it. Cooter says, everybody check off LRS mentions Bitcoin on your Hobby Evolution bingo card. Jay, oh, yeah, there's probably printing plates out there. Oh, where are the plates? Uh, Sam says, got you on the field, Otani's first road game in the States. Uh, John, I should have picked up some dirt. Uh, Johnny V, what's up? Tops have really dropped the ball the last two years with the influencer cards. They finally got it right. Congratulations. It was well-deserved. Thank you. I appreciate that. Nackley Collectibles, what's going on? Sports Card Radio said they would keep it PG because you're a respectable man. <laughs> Sam says, did you get to meet Mark Pryor? No, and I, I forgot that he was uh, with the Dodgers organization. I did not. And uh, the... Mark Pryor was actually, I could have met both. So I, I met Jordan Wicks. This was my 999,999th card. 
And my 999,998th card was actually Mark Pryor. I wish I could say that was by design. It was not. It was just, I actually picked this card up at the card show, at the Madison card show last week. And uh, I'm like, oh, that's going to be a good one for the final stretch. So, uh, but I did not get to meet. And I've never met Mark Pryor. I've met Kerry Wood a few times. I've met Jordan Wicks a couple times in the past. I've never met Mark Pryor. Uh, Harlan says, by the way, I meant the super fractor would end up. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> the base guards might. Uh, I was there in the same space as Otani, Pryor, and Wood. Great game. Fram the cardometer with the one million count. You can display it at shows. That's a good idea. That's a good idea. While you were busy playing in Chicago, you were falling behind on shipping. I am actually ahead. So I got ahead. Uh, and we actually had this. So uh here's a little like non-baseball card talk, like the business talk. So uh my my wife's in real estate. I've talked about that. My buddy Scott is uh a financial planner and he's uh getting his certification now uh taking those tests he's been he's been a financial planner for a few years now but now he's getting some certifications and uh so we were talking about uh i think the the issue of multitasking came up and you know i joke that my wife can't walk and chew gum at the same time like she has to be hyper focused on ta and i am like well you know me and uh we were talking about multitasking and how multitasking actually isn't really good. Um, now, it is in certain, my previous job, you had to be able to multitask because it was highly important to handle multiple tasks at the same time. And did that lead to mistakes? Absolutely. Multitasking leads to mistakes. But it's also, uh, it would not be efficient to not be able to multitask in that, in that, indus in that industry as a whole and transportation. Uh, my wife's in real estate, you know, she could sell a million dollar home. She's going to be hyper-focused on that transaction. My buddy's dealing with people's retirement plans. He's got to be hyper-focused on his clients. Um, and so what I, so, uh, Scott had asked me, uh, so like, do you find yourself like going on social media and like getting distracted on social media during the day? And I said, not really. Like every once in a while, yes. Uh, but my distraction comes from, I don't like to do the same thing. Like, I don't like assembly. Like I couldn't do like the same thing eight hours a day. Like I can't ship for eight hours a day ship. I said that with a P I can't ship for eight hours a day. And so my, sometimes my problem lies where I get so many shipments, but I get ahead based on my handling time on eBay, but it's like, okay, I'm a, I'm ahead. So I'm just going to go list now. And so, but I still have a hundred orders, but they don't need to be shipped by the next two, three days. I've got time. So that's where like my, but I'm like, I'm also a bit ADD. And my wife's like, oh, you are, <laughs> you are ADD. So, uh, and that's just, that's like, I acknowledge it. And I understand the, the sometimes problematic issues that could arise from the way my brain, I just have to work around it. Like it's, I'm always going to be like this. So I've just got to find a workaround to where I limit, uh, my issues with where I have to be hyper-focused on, okay, I've got 384 shipments orders to ship. I need to be hyper-focused today on shipping. Uh, if I get all caught up, I need to be hyper-focused on listing so I can have 384 sh orders to ship. Uh, so I'm not, I'm not behind, like I'm caught up. Um, and, and I can do it. Like I do it when I go to Cubs convention, I do it when I go to spring training. If, if I go on vacation, uh, if I'm going to be gone for the weekend, like I get caught up, uh, based on my handling time or get to zero for a time for a few minutes. Um, so I have over 200 orders to ship, but, um, you know, now I have the whole week at today's so it's just Saturday morning. But uh, that's what I'll be doing today and, well, every day. I always ship. But uh, I am not I, I'm not falling behind, but I'm never at zero. Well, rarely at zero. Uh, hope you're on WrestleMania tonight. New wrestlers dinged corners get body slammed. Will we start seeing Cubs cards in your eBay store? Uh, never say never, but probably not. Um. 
Not yet, at least. And I won't sell, you know, if I sell, like I have, I still have multiple Dylan Cease autos. Um, you know, it's, it's certainly not, it's still a collection. It's still part of my collection. Once I get things organized and, and realize, okay, I've got seven Dylan Cease first Chrome autos, you know, I'm just going to log one. The other six can go in my eBay store. I can use them for trade bait or whatever. So um, it's not like tomorrow you're going to start seeing Cubs cards in my eBay store. Uh, but down the line, yeah, I'll probably put, you know, if I have, I, I think I have a couple, I think I have duplicates of a T206 card. It's like, you know, I could use this for uh, cash capital um, or I could trade it for, for something, um, something like that. It's, I'm probably going to be more likely to sell it than I am trade it. But a Dylan Cease, who's a current player, first Chrome Auto, that's more liquid, both either trade or cash. So, uh, but not right away. Um, George, good morning. Good evening to you. Uh, you can still count and keep it to yourself, or you can keep count and not worry about the number on the board. That's, that's a good point also. I think we're closing in on 700 live viewers between Twitter and YouTube. We're at 690. Welcome to the show. Hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel. We're talking about my day at Wrigley Field yesterday. Uh, Christian says, stop counting and refocus on growing Cubs collectors. One million Cubs project, creating new collectors one card at a time. That's a really great idea and something that I have been striving for, especially here in the last year. You know, giving cards out at spring training at Cubs convention trying to get players involved. Adon Sanchez, uh, who actually he sent me a DM yesterday, congratulating me on, on yesterday. Um, so just trying to get, you know, uh, players involved, just trying to build the hobby, grow the hobby, uh, organically. And if it's done one at a time, Hey, that's one new collector, uh, that's in the hobby. Uh, Patty says you should always do a smaller amount of unique cards past 1 million that your wife would approve. There you go. It's not 2 million Cubs cards. That's the issue. It's probably the other 3 million non-Cubs cards your wife takes exception to. That is a really good point. Yeah, I have a million Cubs cards, but I have 2 or 3 million non-Cubs cards in addition to those million Cubs cards. We're over 700 live viewers right now. That is just absolutely amazing. I think we're probably only at less than 100 on, on YouTube, but we've got over 600 on uh, Twitter. So thank you for, for dropping in on the tweeter. Harlan says, now you can reveal that you were a Cardinals fan all along as you burn the 1 million cards Cubs in your backyard. Never. The Dale Murphy was a very memorable day, but I can imagine that it wouldn't hold a candle to the day you had yesterday. It's all, you know, that for you is, uh, you know, I think we're all, you know, it's all awesome. Your day was awesome. My day was awesome. Uh, let's see. Dan says, don't sign it. The baseball, the first pitch ball. Cooter says, the gold super fractor would look better in a tux. And I am an SGC guy. I am an SGC guy. Oh, Dan says, the card, I mean. Oh, I will not sign this, the super fractor. No, I will not sign the super fractor. Uh, I've contemplated doing the same thing, thing for the Twins, but the Twins don't have the history like the Cubs do. I'd have to get Washington Senators cards. And that isn't Twins yet. And technically, like pre what 1906, I can't, I can, I always forget the lineage, but they weren't known as the Cub. Now they were the Chicago National League Club, and it's the lineage. It's just a name change, a mascot change in the early 1900s. But in the early days, they were the White Stockings, which you know confuses people thinking, well, this is a White Sox card. No, they were two completely different franchises. Uh, Merle says, I'm thinking of collecting 1 million Shiba Inu. It will cost me $28. Hey, I have, I have, I have, I have Shiba Inu. Um, let's see. How many do I have? I have over a million Shiba Inu. Let's see. Shiba. Um, I think I have like three or 4 million Shiba Inu coins, my assets. I think I've actually, I'm in the green on it. Oh, I have almost 6 million. Shiba Inu coins. Uh, and that is a whopping. So nearly 6 million Shiba Inu coins is $162.43. That's the value of 6 million Shiba Inu coins. Uh, Herman says, wouldn't want to mustard that jersey. No, we would not want to get mustard on the jersey. Tracy says, congrats. What a great day. Thank you. 
George says, please, can you send me a base card? I'll pay for shipping. Can you sign it? You bet. I signed like uh, 15 or 20 yesterday. I actually think unsigned so far in the, in the, in the world, whatever, in the mar market, whatever, out in the, out in the wild, I don't think there's a single unsigned boat base card. I think I signed every, everybody wanted their signed that I gave them to at Wrigley yesterday. Uh, Uncle Rich says, now if I may put in a small plug, the good news is that I'm on a hobby hotline. There you go. 10 o'clock, 12 minutes away. So I will be tuned in as soon as I get caught up on this chat. I think I've shared pretty much all the stories from, from yesterday. Um, Cause it was, yeah, it was, it was a, it was a whirlwind. I, I, uh, uh, Dr. Beckett won't be on, but Horatio, who is pretty good, will be on with me already. Um, after the card was given to me, it was like, now I know what like a professional athlete or a coach feels like post game, like after a big game, um, because there were like cameras everywhere um marquee network like pulls me like the cameraman like we need to get coach over here for the post game interview and they're like whoa 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 and so they're like real quick we're gonna do this three minutes all right I'm like okay where do i look that's the first question i always ask where do i look because you don't want to like stare into the camera like i have one million cubs baseball you don't want to be that guy you gotta look cool calm collective so Marquis pulls me aside and then they're like, okay, show the card. And then I got camera guys everywhere. Like, okay, no, can you tip it? Tip it. Okay. Can you go this way? Can you move this way? You're in the sun. Eh, eh. I'm like, oh my God, make this end. And I'm like, okay, okay. Are we done? <laughs> are we done? And we're not done. I'm like more pictures. Crazy. Uh, Uncle Rich says he wants to, me to call in. Uh, we need to have some positive hobby stories. Donald says, card show in Macomb at the VFW today. That's right. Macomb card show today. Macomb, Illinois. Check it out if you're in Western Illinois. Uh, low Roller Scratcher, did you see Sammy Sosa? Sammy was not in attendance. No, Sammy. Gooder says, sort by player, but put one in a master set. I was. That's what I was thinking. That's what I was thinking. You would have a nice catalog of Cubs teams for people to see. That is a good idea because it does. I do like the history. And that's what I, and I mentioned that in, in, one of the videos I did for tops was I just like the history and preserving that history. And, uh, you know, I think that's something that gets lost in the hobby is the history of the game. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Archer says I definitely need a base card for my Cubs collection. Dan is here. He says, is there a part of you that wants to tag the Guinness Book of World Records with your story again and show them what they missed out on? Yes, I will give it another go with Guinness. I have I have reached out. I have applied to the Guinness Book of World Records twice. Cost five dollars to apply. So I've pissed away ten dollars getting rejected by the Guinness Book of World Records. I'll try it again. And now with tops and the Cubs. Now maybe maybe they'll listen. So yeah, I'll try it again. Maybe that's maybe that's my on my to do list this week uh, since it's still fresh. Uh, Porter says I'd love to have one of your base cards if you have one to spare. I know I'm low on the totem. You are not. Nobody here is low on the totem pole. Uh, you've been instrumental in my return to the hobby. Thanks for doing what you do. Thank you. I appreciate that. And I could probably reach out to Tops and be like, Hey, I'm out of cards already. Can I get some more? Can you get, can it's a base card. Just keep the printers running. Brian says star discord to trade your Cubs cards extras for ones. You need start a discord. That's a really damn good idea. Brian star for the day. I like that idea. I don't really know how to do discord, uh, but I can figure it out. I still haven't figured out Instagram though. Um, my wife even in joked and my wife's pretty good with social media. And uh, she's like, I only know how to post on Instagram. And I'm like, yeah, and I don't even really know how to do that well. Like, I just post a picture, click. I know how to tag people. And I know how to send it to my Facebook page. Uh, Cody's here. What's up? Good morning. Will the card be on display at the Madison Card Show? Ooh, probably not because I don't, like, I don't have a table. Maybe I'll get, like, one of those chains like Logan Paul has for his Pokemon card. 
and I'll just wear it around my neck. This is my own super fracker. Uh, Christian, good morning. He says, if you were an A's collector, they would have sent you a coupon for McDonald's coffee that expired 20 years ago, right? Uh, SoCal guy says, well, tops let you get additional base cards. And yeah, I, I'm now I'm wondering, cause I think there's, I think there's going to be more demand than, than a hundred. Uh, many people would probably like to have one, but you only received a hundred. Yes. Got a hundred. So I can probably reach out and be like, Hey, there's a lot of demand for this card. And then I'll be like, and can you give me a Ginter card too? <laughs> can you put me in the Allen and Ginter set? Uh, Dodger Town Fungo, what's up? Congratulations, spectacular honor. I believe this is good for hobby promotion. I think it's great. It's great that uh, because I consider myself just an average Joe collector and that an average Joe like me uh, received this kind of treatment uh, from Tops is, is awesome, is awesome. Tops, now that card. I would definitely love to have a base card for my much smaller collection. Ron says you'll sign base cards TTM. Heck yeah. Heck yeah. So what a day it was. What a day it was. Um, so again, uh, you know, and I, I think I said this on, on the interview with Marquis, um, that there's so many people to thank and I don't want to start naming names because I'll forget people. But obviously everybody at Tops, uh, they were just amazing to work with from start to finish. Uh, just so awesome. Uh, the Chicago Cubs. And, uh, you know, the, and I can, I can, uh, name names cause there's a few people that I worked with at the Cubs, uh, Stevie who handles like the first pitch stuff and, uh, uh, kind of like guided us, you know, through the whole process. She was awesome. Um, Jim who's with player relations and met him for the first time out at spring training, um, He's the one who introduced me to Jordan and, and Kerry Wood, uh, Brian Garza, who's uh, in tickets. Um, and we've actually done some trades. His son's a Blackhawks fan. And so uh, I sent some some Blackhawks Black Hawks cards to uh, to Brian and his son, sent me some Cubs cards. Um, and actually, we share an alma mater. He's from Sterling, not, not too far from where I grew up. Um, so it was great to meet him in person for the first time. Um, and who am I missing? I'm probably missing more people from the Cubs, but, uh, and obviously it tops. Um, so just awesome, awesome day again, an experience, obviously I will never forget and, uh, went beyond, you know, my own super fractor face cards to give out to, to friends, family. And, uh, uh, just the, the day was, uh, was, was better than anything I could have, of imagined. So. Uh, Cooter says, always thank your wife first. And of course, of course, I think that goes without saying, but it needs to be said more. So yes, thank you to my lovely wife. Um, just an awesome day, an awesome day. Um, yeah, so we'll, uh, we'll do this again tomorrow. We'll talk about something tomorrow. Probably what I had for dinner. That's about it. So uh, hit the like button. Uh, we're almost at 800. We might hit 800 before I sign off. We're at 798 between Twitter and YouTube. Uh, hit the like button. Uh, if you've never watched my videos before, I go live every morning at uh, 7 a.m. ish Central Time and just talk about the hobby, talk about cards. We're over 800 live viewers. Holy crap. Uh, so uh, uh, 7 a.m. Central, uh, Hobby Evolution talk about cards, talk about life, talk about snow that, that I hate shovel and, uh, and all that good stuff. Hobby hotline is coming up in four minutes, three minutes. Uncle Rich, our friend is going to be on there. Who else is on with him? Horatio. And I can't remember who he said the third person was. So check out hobby hotline. It's on the bench clear media channel. Uh, That'll be a good show. My eBay store, I don't think I put the link in the description this morning, but I, but I should have with all these viewers. Uh, visit my eBay store, 99centcards.com. Buy seven or more at regular price. You'll save 25% off at checkout. There are no Cubs in my eBay store, though. So if you're a Cubs fan, I'm sorry. Will I sell Cubs eventually? Maybe, but not yet. So, uh, and they'll only be my duplicates. So, 
Uh, thanks again. Uh, thanks everybody for, for all the congrats, uh, either here or on social media platforms. Uh, you can follow me on, on other platforms. I'm on Instagram at 1 million cubs, obviously here on YouTube, 1 million cubs, Twitter, the 1 million cubs project on Facebook. I'm on LinkedIn is my name, Bo Thompson, Bo Spencer Thompson, I think. So, uh, follow me on, on those as well. Again, thank you so much for everybody. Appreciate it. Like, subscribe. We'll do this again tomorrow morning around 9. Maybe I'll sleep in tomorrow. So maybe 9 a.m. Central tomorrow morning. We'll see you then.